Casino is not a film about static being, but rather dynamic becoming. My name is Zachary Cohn, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Casino, Martin Scorsese's 1995 epic of avarice and greed, uh, starring Robert De Niro, Sharon Stone, Joe Pesci, Don Rickles, Kevin Pollock, and James Woods, just to name a few. This movie disgusted me when I was a kid. It completely disturbed me. And it took me a very long time to figure out where that disgust and repulsion really came from. And honestly, it came from this. It's very easy to compare this film to Goodfellas. Uh, a bare five years had passed since Goodfellas making. And, of course, De Niro and Pesci play characters that at least share a few similarities with the ones they portrayed in Goodfellas. The film goes through the same sort of kinetic, uh, wild acrobatics that Goodfellas did. It deals with the same sort of subject matter, and both are films of great length. Now, the main separator, the main thing that differentiates Casino from Goodfellas is also what makes it so disturbing and so disgusting for me, personally. It's a deeply confrontational film, a challenging film, and I think a film that is far more sophisticated and daring than Goodfellas was. And it really comes down to this. The characters in Goodfellas, all things considered, are rather likable. They are likable people with strong themes of family and friendship and loyalty. Now, if those themes are there in Casino, they are inverted completely, and every character is extremely, extremely unlikable, even Robert De Niro's Ace Rothstein. They are incredibly unlikable, each and every one. Scorsese is telling us a, a fable about avarice and about greed and about lust, about betrayal, about murder and ultraviolence. And he's telling it to us in, in a kind of a completely stylistically honest way by having absolutely nothing likable to use as an anchor for emotionality. If you choose De Niro as your emotional anchor through this uh, torrent of violence, then you will come away from it completely disgusted with yourself because you have identified with someone who is like, incredibly paranoid, incredibly violent, incredibly impotent. Now, Casino is incredibly, it's incredibly put together, and it's about the impotence of all things masculinity. Um, you have to look just beyond the idea of bearing children. It's about the impotence of money, the impotence of your position within your own company, the impotence of friendship, the impotence of being a lover, of being a satisfying lover, of ever having been a satisfying lover. It's all about male impotence. And Casino takes its sweet time, three hours worth of time, truly getting into a place where it could study male impotence, where it could study uh, male humiliation, where it could study the ultra-violent conclusions of such delusions of grandeur, right? Mm. I think that Casino is phenomenal. An absolute bedlam of visual acrobatics, as I was saying. It's a sweepingly put-together film. It is um, so precise and also just so deliberately isolated uh, emotionally. Like I said, there's no likable anchor. It's so deliberately isolated. It doesn't want you to relate to it, yet Scorsese, I think, has just enough of a cynical view of humanity that he knows that you're going to. He knows that you're going to relate to it regardless, in spite of your better nature. And the house always wins. Casino is more so about, uh, you know, America's Sodom, in a way. I mean, that, that, that's incredibly obvious, but if we, on this channel, I always say that every Martin Scorsese film, the secret to every single one, is that they're all secretly films about God, sometimes not so secretly. Casino is certainly a film about God, and one of Scorsese's trademarks is his use of slow motion. Now, when he uses slow-mo, he slows down a specific instance of time, a specific moment, to kind of counterintuitively express and demonstrate the impermanence of time, the impermanence of that moment, or maybe even 
express the inevitable doom that we could see cinematically. But also, when you make a moment cinematic, when you slow it down, as through slow motion, and you make it more cinematic, by proxy of doing that, you are also making it more holy. So these moments have to be viewed as holy moments, as something within the scope of divinity. In Casino, slow-mo is used very, very often. And Casino, if we're looking at it as a sort of purgatory, or as a Sodom, as a Gomorrah, as a completely doomed and uh, com com completely sinful city, then it's very easy to pick up on where God is in Casino. God is everywhere but Las Vegas. There is retribution in this film, there is revenge, there is punishment, there... People get what they deserve in this film, in an uh, extremely nihilistic sort of way. God is not in Casino, God permeates everything around Casino. God is not in Las Vegas. God is not with us when we are incredibly impotent, we, when we are operating on that primal base urge of absolute greed. God is not with us when we are just thinking about, um, about, about women that we want to experience viscerally, about uh, money that we want to just attain superficially, about the most selfish quests of masculinity. God is not there when we are on those self-destructive paths. But God is everywhere around that sphere. You, you, you choose to go outside of, God's, um, outside of God's grace when you enter into a city as polluted uh, emotionally and um, characteristically as Las Vegas. When you go into Las Vegas, you turn your back on God, and God cannot help you. God cannot save you in Las Vegas. It doesn't make it any less holy. It's just that that holiness has a severely pessimistic and nihilistic kind of um, certainty and irreversible dread to it. And that's where you get that slow-mo. And that's where you get the divinity. And that's where you get God in Casino. I think Casino is incredible. I think it's an incredible film. Joe Pesci, uh, once again, you know, as a proto... <laughs> Not a proto, but as a new, as a neo, James Cagney is very, very impressive. He's, he's incredibly impressive in Scorsese films. Scorsese knew how to use him perfectly. And this performance from De Niro was stunning. A stunning De Niro performance, and Sharon Stone was remarkable. Uh, her final scene where she's kind of um, clinging to the hallway of the motel where she dies... Uh, it's an extremely well put together scene. It is so impeccably choreographed. It expresses so much, and the musicality of this film is really something else. But this is also truly a film that is rhythmic in its own right. The music is there to kind of drive the uh, the lyricality of Scorsese's visuals home. But I definitely believe that if you watched it on mute, the uh, visual acrobatics, the kinetics of the film, the remarkable kinetics, would kind of form their own rhythm. Once you got down to its base essentials on mute, it would form its own harmony, its own rhythm, its own jazzy rock and roll fusion. It would form that and you would see it on screen because there is a definite rhythm to the cinematography of the film. Martin Scorsese is a complete master. He is my favorite filmmaker of all time. And it's really because he can make several different films in one. There are an incredible amount of layers to Casino. And the, the deeper you peel it down, the deeper you get within your own psyche. A lot of the times, his films offer more of a window into the soul of the analyzer than what's truly being analyzed. But that's how you know that you're in the presence of someone truly outstanding, someone truly remarkable, that he turns all reviews into uh, self-psychoanalysis of sorts. Uh, Casino, I can't help but watch it and think of my own shortcomings or my own ideals uh, or ideations of masculine worth, masculine value inside of this um, city that is really the totality and expression of masculine virtue, of masculine um, conquest, uh, you know, of, of masculine detriment, of masculine um, outrage and apocalypse. That's really what the city is. The city was built out of greed, out of avarice, specifically masculine greed and masculine 
um, avarice, and the women who are attracted to that city, the, the hustlers like Sharon Stone's character, are exactly the type of uh, women that these uh, emotionally impotent men deserve. And they deserve to be destroyed by these women, by the women who are attracted to the bright neon lights of their own complete failure and castration. They deserve to be defeated by that. It, it's, it, it's absolutely an incredible film. Um, I'm completely in awe of it. It is challenging and, and sophisticated and it's confrontational because, like I said, these characters are not likable, but these characters are almost more truthful than the ones portrayed in Goodfellas, the ones portrayed in, in Scorsese's earlier crime masterpieces, because these characters um, have a very sad, but I think tender, palpable, visceral realism to them, even if you don't want to admit it. Casino is an absolutely incredible masterwork, and it's undervalued, it's underrated, uh, simply because Goodfellas exists. So now, while I understand the comparison, I do not understand why everyone comes out on the side of Goodfellas. Because Casino is something that is so challenging, so in your face, almost daring you to complete it. Casino is something that wants to affect you, that wants to hurt you, something that, that uh, doesn't want to inspire you in, in, in any sort of way. It's a film that wants to dynamically become something different each time that you watch it because all the thematics of the, uh, the impotence of all things popular masculinity uh, I think will always be transformative, will always uh, be able to be viewed in a different sort of way through a more critical um, self-referential lens. Casino is absolutely incredible, incredibly ultra-violent as well. It really ramps that up. It really turns that one up all the way to max. It's an incredibly ultra-violent film, that's fine, but because they're dealing with an extremely ultra-violent city. They're dealing with an extremely chaotic city when it comes to anything about morality, when it comes to anything about mores, when it comes to anything about um, salvation. Because once you enter Las Vegas, you turn your back on salvation. And those who um, are rather successful in Las Vegas, those are the people, um, like, if you're incredibly successful in Sodom or Gomorrah, you're, those are the people who divine punishment or just human punishment, just absolute, cruel, brutal, ultra-violent punishment, those are the people who that is waiting for more than anyone else. And punishment, justice, always gets its man at some point, and you will have your face bashed in with a baseball bat after you watch your brother be beaten to death uh, terribly and embarrassingly. It's, a, it's an incredible movie. It's an absolutely incredible film. I think it's, like, fucking, like, perfect. I really do. I really do. Mm. Scorsese really, really blows my mind. Casino is an absolutely, absolutely mind-blowing film. Uh, I, I can't believe that he had the, um, the ability to really just put that all together because it, there are so many different moving parts and different um, rotating mechanisms inside of Casino's, uh, like, visuals inside of Casino's thematics. And the fact that Scorsese was able to really not even juggle all of those, but completely see the entire picture, the entire machine, every single cog within it, some larger, some, some smaller, and see exactly how they would fit together, and then they fit together in exactly that way, maybe even transcend the director's own initial meanings and, and ambitions with the film. It's that sort of dynamic becoming that I'm talking about. This film is so remarkably sophisticated, so uh, remarkably complex, that the film just, um, the mechanisms within the machine of the film keep uh, becoming, reinvigorating themselves, keep uh, regenerating themselves to acquire new meanings, to mean new things to different people and to mean new things to different cultures and time periods. Uh, C Casino is a remarkable film. Casino is a masterful film. It's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece of the cinema, most certainly. Mm. I actually just got done working for a casino 
here in Florida. I worked in the poker room of a casino, you know, handling chips and things like that. So it was fun watching it after that personal experience and, and meeting the people who go to casinos regularly. I mean, there were people who were there before my shift started and were there well after my shift ended and I went home. Uh, these are desperate people. These are people with problems, people with addictions, people with delusions of grandeur, with incredibly uh, self-destructive goals. <sighs> these are people lost to any sort of cinematic or holy uh, salvation that might be available to, uh, to, to humankind. You know, they're completely lost to that. Uh, casinos are where you turn your back on any and any chance for the grand prize of existence, you know. A remarkable movie. Thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Zachary Conan. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Yeah, in the comments, what do you think of Casino? Because it is kind of a polarizing film. I am interested to know what you think of the film. And this is also one of uh, a couple times, and Mean Streets did this as well. He showed a swastika on a table, and this film during a raid a child is watching a program on television that features Nazis and Nazism. Scorsese likes to do that when um, either about to hit an ultra-violent peak or maybe when even expressing the police state that he believes that we live in. Maybe he views the, the, the modern American police state as something a bit fascist, you know, as something um, on the tipping point of genocide. That, that was a really fascinating thing that he did in Casino. He uh, juxtaposed, or truly paralleled, Nazism with the, uh, with the American police. So you had to think of police state, you had to think of fascism. Um, I guess that's viewed through the child's eyes, right? Because the child is the one watching a television at that point. So in a children's eyes, um, this police state is a police state and it's fascist. I don't know, leave in the comments. This is a very challenging movie. There are... There are so many um, complexities to really go over in each little part of it. So definitely in the comments, let me know what you think of Casino. Like I said, it's polarizing. A lot of people like to really skip over it or just mention it very briefly, where I think um, it deserves a magnifying glass. It, it deserves to be explored, investigated, and completely dissected. What do you think of Casino? Let me know in the comments.